What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? We've got another Rad Formational segment here. This time we're going to talk about GSLSE, fuel injection, and the Rat's Nest Elite on those or on that fuel injection. So, our case subject rally car. Now, you've probably already seen me completely rip the engine out of this and um, probably clean the engine bay. I would say by the time you see this video. Um, anyways, so here's the goal. You have a GSLC. You also have a whole bunch of stuff going on down in here. Okay? Tons of vacuum lines, tons of wiring that you don't want to have to see anymore. Just a whole bunch of junk. So, you want to get rid of it. Because if you look at this setup, this is clean. You know? It's all nice. We'll say clean, but the wiring harness is uncut. So, if you see right there, that hard line is all that's left of the vacuum system on this car. And I'll just come out here and show you real quick. Just take all of maybe 30 seconds what it would look like if you had all the vacuum systems on there. Okay, no critters. So, this, besides having a rag under it. Okay, anyways. That right there is what you would have had. See all the blue lines, all the crazy stuff running around? Yep. That's your vacuum system. And this car is a mess right now. So, what do you do to get rid of it? Well, first off, go ahead and look at your intake. And you're going to see a bunch of spots on this one at least, and on yours, that you're going to have to actually cover up and plate off. So, one being like right here, your idle air control valve, which is that boy. You need to get a block off plate for that. You will need to keep your intake air, intake air temp sensor, which is this little two wire sensor right here. That's just those little, it's a little um, two pin connector. You won't need any of your um, solenoids anymore. So these colored connectors, generally your vacuum solenoids. We got an orange one and a green one here. Um, I think this is your idle air control valve plug, or that is. You don't need these four plugs. We got a three pin here and a two pin there. So you can take those out of the equation. Block that off for your idle air control valve. Basically, any vacuum port, pretty much cap it. So you're gonna see here the TPS. You do still need that. It's right here, little TPS guy. Um, on the back side here, there's some vacuum ports back here down the bottom. Cap both of those. On the front side, there's some vacuum ports right here. Cap all of those. Um, you will also have on the back of the intake manifold right here, there's this big giant plug that would go down, I believe, it goes down to the exhaust. Okay. And that goes down to like a heated thing on the exhaust to help heat the intake up sooner. Cap that off. You see this is just a, probably the original hose with the big bolt in it. You're going to have 5th and 6th port actuators on this motor. So that's this little boy right here. Now this is operated off of pressure. Okay. Not suction. So these don't get vacuum. The car that has suction... It's a Series 5. You have to have suction to open the 5th and 6th ports. On a Series 4 and a GSLC, it's pressure. So, this is blocked off, or not being used, but if you were, and you want to actually hook this back up, because um, this motor just doesn't have the sleeves in it at all, um, but if you want to use that, you need to leave the little baby vacuum port. Okay, there's going to be a little vacuum port that comes out of your catalytic converter you need to leave that on there because the pressure of the exhaust coming out of the muffler or coming through the catalytic converter is what pushes and opens up the fifth and sixth ports okay so if you just say want to do the hack job way to do it without having to pull everything apart and you're just going to do the vacuum delete and you want your fifth and sixth ports open you can just wire the actuators open so right here you see that big solenoid guy Chilling right here. You can see that as this goes down, it spins this little this little valve guy right here. So you can just take that and wire it down. 
on both of them. There's a front one and a back one. Oh, and you can see some wires on this one too. So that's how you would wire those open. You will need for the uh, BAC, block that plate off, two vacuum ports here, block off. This car does not run the factory OMP. So if you're gonna retain the oil metering pump, the rat's nest has a oil metering pump like distribution finger. So imagine one vacuum line in to four vacuum lines coming off that. Those each go to your oil metering injectors. You have to delete those. Um, there are plugs in the housings you will need to plug. So if you look right here, this is a GSLC motor. This little hole right here is where the oil meter ring pump squirter goes in. You will need to block that off. Life hack, if you have an automatic car laying around, a flex plate to converter bolt will fit and it's the perfect length. If you don't have one of those laying around, which you probably don't, and I feel bad for you if you do, because you that means you had an RX automatic RX7 at one point. Um, you can go to any like nut and bolt store, take your oil metering pump injector. It's like a little funky looking squirty thing. If I can't find one in the next seven seconds, I'll just give up. Um, yep. Anyways, take your oil metering pump injector to the store, find one that's the right threads, thread it in. You can't thread it in all the way because it will like bottom out. You don't want to push in there. So thread it in about four or five threads with some silicone on it. Lop the bolt off and you're good to go. I am going to pop off this intake really quick and then show you what all's done on the bottom side of the intake. Super simple stuff. This is a fairly easy, easy deal to do. And if you hop on the forums, you can probably find a write up on how to do this. Um, it's super easy, but this is just a more visual for you to be able to go and check off the box like oh i blocked that off i blocked that off i blocked that off i kept this but i oh i forgot to keep that hooked up or whatever this is what this is for so we're gonna pull this off real quick movie magic movie magic and it's off so okay to recap we're gonna stay on the upper intake manifold real quick before i show you what's there so all those little things i told you to block off here here, here, it doesn't matter, you loop them, doesn't matter. that's still blocking it off because it's to the same hole. Just block off all those. There is a little straggler down here on the bottom of the throttle body, which you might not be able to see without my light. Let me get my light. See that little red guy down there? Don't miss him. This is basically your choke. Okay, so it's controlled by the thermal wax that runs this front set of blades here. Mine's not hooked up to anything, it's just ran across for no apparent reason. The thermal wax isn't hooked up to anything. Don't even have coolant run into the thermal wax. I've just looped the line. So take the rear iron coolant line from here and put it up here or some people will have the port on the back of the housing there. Therm or the back of the back of the thermostat housing. Um back here also block those boys off. That goes to your intake boot. You can leave it. I think that's pretty much it as far as the upper intake manifold and what I showed you on the other side. So moving into the to the engine bay. Now you're gonna see a bolt here, a bolt here, a little set screw thing down in this hole right there. See that little set screw down there, <clears throat> and then the mirror of it on the front housing. The oil metering pump block offs. Those are those. You got two on the intake manifold tube down there. You should also have a vacuum port down here. You gotta block that guy off right there. This is the wiring for your fuel injectors and your um, O2 sensor. You gotta leave that stuff in. Here's that big thing I was telling you about earlier um, that comes in. Not quite like, it doesn't, it goes like in here and then down through the center iron and then out in the middle and it gets blocked off. It's basically to recirculate exhaust gas through the intake to heat the engine up. This big boy right here, this guy, this is your brake booster vacuum. Um, I don't think you necessarily need to have your canister anymore, but um, this one's still on here because this side is basically being used like a catch can. So you've got the crankcase vent right there coming over to this. And then this little one is actually your EVAP tank vent. So this hard, metal hard line right here goes all the way down to the back by the gas tank. So you'll want to keep that if you don't want it to be smelly. If you don't care, send it. And I just broke my washer fluid. It's leaking now. 
making a mess. Okay, anyways, I believe that that is pretty much it. As far as, oh well, I guess I missed something big. Gotta block off the EGR valve. So there's exhaust gas that comes up through here too. Gotta block that guy off. Um, yeah, there's plenty of places you can get block off kits from. Whether it be LRB, Speed, Atkins, Rotary, Rotary Aviation, you name it. There's a lot of places that sell um, block off plate kits for these motors. So, basically, quick rundown. Rip your rat's nest out. Rerun your fuel lines, or you can use the hard line like what I did. Block off pretty much everything on the upper intake manifold, plates, the whole deal. You need to keep the TPS plug, you need to keep your intake air temperature sensor plug, you need to keep your mass airflow sensor plug, which is a big one, that big thing by the air filter. Um, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, you can take everything else off. Um, and like I said before, there's probably a pretty good write-up on it, but this at least puts kind of, um, we'll just say visual and me explaining it to, to perspective. So I'll throw this video up for you guys. Thanks for watching. Keep your head.